So you sat at home and you're like, hey, I should get into data science. But you know to put the data into the science, you need a little bit of maths. And maybe you haven't done maths for a little bit. And you're wondering if you can do it. So you hop on Google and you look for maths for data science and you look at one of these graphs and you're like, I don't know if I can learn that. Well, you're in luck because by the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how much math I use and maybe more importantly, what math I used to pass my masters in data science and AI. And I've just got my first job as a data scientist. So I'll be telling you how much math I use on a day to day basis as well. Okay, so I'm currently doing my masters in data science and AI, which is split into 12 months of learning and then 12 months of internship. So currently I'm in my internship where I've done about four to five months of actual working. <laughs> so I have recent experience with both working and in university. So these are the modules that I took during the learning year of my university period. And from these, we can take out these modules because I will deem these as not having a significant amount of maths. And let's make a quick distinction here. Having a significant amount of maths, I mean either there's a lot of maths you have to write down and work stuff out for yourself, or you have to understand a significant amount of maths in order to either pass a bit of coursework or to pass the exam. So that's the distinction. And listen, people, for those modules I canceled, maybe you have to understand some maths, but I'm focusing on the most important maths. That's what's going to give you the most value here. So even from these four math based modules, the amount of maths needed in each actually varies. So, for example, databases and AI had this weird database algebra that I'd never heard of, have not used in the real life since. But still, it was a little bit of maths involved. And I bet one of you might actually work in a field where you use that database algebra. So if you do, could you put it down in the comments? Because I'm genuinely curious about that. OK, so now on to the big hitters. The first module is mathematics and statistics for data science and AI. And the main purpose of this module was to give you a solid grounding in maths. So what topics did you need to know? The first topic was differential calculus, which was pretty important. This includes understanding things like trigonometry, functions, linear equations, and stuff like limits. Oh, and differentiation. Differentiation, differentiation, differentiation. Get used to it until it doesn't even sound like a word because it's such an important topic. And in fact, differentiation spanned across multiple modules for me. So if you can have a good understanding of that before, then you're gonna be in a great position. Linear algebra is also really important. That can include stuff like working with vectors and matrices, which isn't the most difficult thing, but this is highly important for understanding things like how weights and biases are updated during the perceptron update rule. And if you haven't studied data science, that might sound like super hard and like, Ugh. no, you, you can do it. It just sounds fancy. Don't worry. So yeah, vectors for that kind of thing and maybe even more complex modeling. Oh, and systems of linear equations are also very important to understand. And odds are, you already knew that probability theory was going to come up on this list. Okay, so basically you need to know conditional probability, Bayesian probability, continuous probability, and if you know those three, you're pretty much good to go. Moving on to the more statsy bit, you have stuff like hypothesis testing, understanding the different types of errors, one tail testing, two tail testing, as well as topics like goodness of fit. Linear regression was also a backbone topic that spanned across multiple modules and also generally understanding gradient descent. So you can see the map in this module is not the most complicated thing, but again, it was meant to function as a foundation to build onto in different modules, which you'll see as we move on to the next module, database, Ooh. data mining and visualization. So what is data mining? Well, with no plagiarism whatsoever and straight off the top of my head, Data mining is the process of extracting and discovering patterns in large data sets involving methods at the intersection of machine learning, statistics, and database systems. Data mining is an interdisciplinary subfield of computer science and statistics with an overall goal of extracting information from a data set and transforming the information into a comprehensible structure for further use. Square brackets one, square brackets two, square brackets three. I did totally make that up off the top of my head, okay? Anyways, as you can tell, a fair bit of math involved in that. So one of the key concepts for this was linear algebra, which again, you really have to nail because it's a cornerstone for this degree in general. So this was involved in things like working with vectors and matrices, and this is multiplication, addition, subtraction, transposition, rank, linear dependence, and all of that kind of thing. And once again, differentiation was highly important. And again, logistic regression also popped up during this module. Wait, Nash, but this is exactly what you described for the maths and stats module. 
Yes, it is. But like I was telling you, maths and stats is the foundation, which you learn in a vacuum. You just learn how to do the things. Then in data mining and visualization, you learn how you can take those and put them into real life situations to get information from that. So for example, in maths and stats, you just learn multiplying vectors and matrices, but then here you learn how to use those within a perceptron algorithm, as I mentioned, and how you can multiply those vectors by certain numbers in order to update the weights, which would then allow you to do classification. Again, don't worry if this sounds fancy, you can do it. I could do it, so you're fine. Right, the last Matsy module, computational intelligence. Right, so like I said, my degree was data science and AI, and computational intelligence is definitely more of an AI topic. But I'm just gonna give you a brief overview. So this module didn't have any implementation of maths, but it was the key for understanding the maths behind certain things like different sorts of neural networks, as well as things like multi-layer perceptrons, forward propagation and back propagation. So this could also cover things like radial basis networks, support vector machines, all very fun stuff. But like I said, there was no implementation of the maths. It was all about the understanding. Right, so that's all the maths that I needed to pass my degree. But now the big question, how much maths have I used in the real world, on the job, day to day? And I'm going to give you the definitive answer of how much maths you need to know to be a data scientist. And the answer is... depends. That's the answer. That's the real answer. It depends. But that doesn't help anybody. So I'm going to tell you how much maths I use as a data scientist on a day to day basis and how much maths other data scientists potentially use. Okay. Okay, so personally, I work at a startup, which means I have to do a little bit of everything, a bit of data engineering, data analysis, and data science stuff. But all this means that the actual amount of maths I use on a day-to-day -day basis varies. So if I'm having more of a data engineering heavy day, there's hardly any maths involved. I'd be spending most of my time either in Python or SQL, you know, scraping the data, or once it's been scraped, putting it into a nice, pretty structured view that we can work with later. Another 30% of my time is spent doing more data analysty stuff. And this might be the times where I do the most actual maths. But usually it's fairly simple maths and the key is just understanding what the maths is saying so that I can then feed it back to you clients in the form of a report in the most simplistic way so they can just understand what's going on without stressing too much. And then roughly 50% of my time is spent doing actual data sciencey stuff. And this is mainly coding based, not really maths based as it's building a lot of predictive models and maybe even descriptive models, that sort of thing. So I may have to interpret the results in a mathematical manner, but there's not much of me actually like writing equations and stuff like that. I guess that's the theme really, it's about understanding the math. Only at the very high level do you get a lot of actual implementation. That's my feeling at least. Do not forget, I'm just an intern. Okay, so let's move on to the grander scheme of things. How much maths do data scientists in general actually use? And the truth is my first answer of it depends was the correct one. Because within data science, there's so many sub roles, everything depends on what industry you're actually in. But let's try and give it a more definitive answer. The one thing I would say, regardless of what your data science role is, if you haven't done data science, you might be thinking you have to like sit down and calculate things in your calculator or whatever. But the truth is a lot of the time, a piece of code will be able to do all the calculations for you. Or worst case scenario, there'll be a website somewhere that can do <laughs> that calculation for you. The important thing is understanding what are these numbers are telling me. Every result is telling you something. It's just a representation of what is going on in the real world. So more than knowing how to work things out, there's a clock in the exam and stuff like that. It's knowing what is telling you and maybe what factors are contributing to that final number and what you can change on the back end, i.e. in real life. Okay, I'm gonna give you one real life world example and then you'll understand exactly what I mean. Let's say you build a classification model that takes in a picture of a scan of an X-ray and then predicts whether this person has a lung disease or is completely healthy. You can feed this data into your model and at the end, your piece of code will probably give you a matrix that looks like this, called a confusion matrix. So if somebody is here, that's called a true positive. 
You told them that they have a lung disease and they do have that lung disease. You have a false positive. You told them they have a lung disease, but they don't have that. A true negative. You told them they don't have it and they don't have it. And then a false negative. You told them they don't have it, but they do have it. And all of that is represented by these numbers in the confusion matrix. That's worked out for you. You didn't do any actual maths there. But it's also giving you things like accuracy, recall, and precision, which had worked out for you. So accuracy is the number of correct predictions divided by the total predictions. Precision is the number of true positives divided by the number of true positives and false negatives. So how many of the people who were positive did you correctly identify? Whilst on the other hand, recall is this formula here. Okay, great. We haven't had to pull out our calculator once and we have all this information just spat out at us. But here's where the interpretation is very important. So your model may have had 100 images fed into it, of which 90 in real life did not have that disease and 10 did. But we'll say that your model is very poorly developed and it always predicts that the person does not have that disease. If you're just looking at accuracy, it has a 90% accuracy, which sounds pretty good. But now you've told 10 people with a potentially fatal disease that they don't have it and they just go about their day instead of making lifestyle changes. Now here's where the more fancy maths may come in because you may have to go on the back end and tune your hyperparameters for your model in order to change the recall and accuracy and that sort of thing. So you can see on the back end of things, if you are the one who's developing the metal, model, that's where the more complicated things come in. So this is just what I know at the moment. My guess is that the further you go up and the more data specific your company is, the more maths that's going to be involved. But another crucial component of data science is coding. And a lot of people always wonder how much coding is actually involved in data science. So I'm making a video on that, which is going to be linked here, either in the cards or on the end screen. But like I said, this is what I know as an intern at the moment, but I'm taking all of you along on my journey from a newbie to an elite data scientist. So if you want to follow the journey and learn as I learn, feel free to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.